Okay. Um, hello, everyone. How's everyone doing? Yeah? Nice. Okay. Who here is a developer? Yeah? Awesome. Who here thinks development is cool? Great. Okay. Now everyone's on board. So um, very nice to meet all of you. My name is Sarah. Uh, I am the founder and CEO of Philby, which stands for short fill builders. So we are the team behind building a fill builder community for Filecoin and encouraging people to build on-chain dApps and really cool projects and supporting them along the way. Um, if we, are, we will be around, so do talk to our team after this. Um, for today's talk, I would love to share with all of you some of the new improvements that are coming to Falcon L1, um, things that have also made it easier for builders to build on the L1, which includes third-party integrations, um, and some incoming tools that will find, you will find super useful for that builders. So I'll run through some of this, and I also have a very exciting announcement to share around what builders can have as a really important resource, hint, hint, um, at the end of my talk. So this is super fresh. You are hearing it first at Phil Bangkok. So first, for the protocol dev, we would like to share some incoming improvements to the Filecoin L1. These are really big protocol changes that are coming in 2025. Um, two main things here, proof of data possession as well as fast finality. So you might be asking, what does that actually mean? Right? Um, for a long time, we've heard Filecoin builders ask for things like fast retrieval. Right, because Filecoin does really well in the archival storage space, and we let you store your data. It does take a little bit longer for you to retrieve that data because most, it's mostly for really large pieces of data, and so we want to be able to provide fast retrieval services. That comes with proof of data possession, PDP, um, which basically means that not just storage providers, but any new, it's a new provider format as well, where you can store something called a proof of data possession proof. Um, so this proof will show that you have that piece of data that is unsealed and available to retrieve at any point of time. So if you are able to prove that over time, that allows um, any dApps that are looking to pull out retrievals to know that their data is there and retrievable at any point of time, and then um, be able to use that within their dApp. So PDP is going to be really exciting. We actually have Storasha that is going to be building with PDP, and we're super excited to see hot storage coming to Filecoin, which good news is it's going to make it super easy to build with Filecoin. And then we have F3, fast finality. So when the FVM launched back in March last year, I can't believe it's been almost a year and a half, uh, I was there during launch and it feels like it's been a really long time because we've been talking to so many builders, but it's actually only been a year and a half. And at the point of launch, um, there were many exciting DeFi projects and these continue to come in. Um, one big ask from them is, how do we interact with other ecosystems? How do we show transactions finalizing on the chain quickly? Because in Filecoin's case, on the protocol, we have a unique thing called um, block time and that takes a little bit longer than other chains. Um, and so now with fast finality, that allows for any cross-chain interactions, whether it's DeFi or whether it's general message passing, these transactions will finalize much quicker on the Filecoin L1, which means that it's effectively the same to most app chains out there. You can have a dApp that then calls back to Filecoin and your transactions will finalize super fast. So F3 is coming really, really soon. We will have an, a really easy API to use for developers, so do look forward to that. So that is for the protocol level changes that are coming. So for the advanced builder, we have cross-chain data bridges that are coming out. We have a POC that is already working, deployed to Arbitrum as well as Optimism. So let me share a little bit more around what cross-chain data bridges are. So um, earlier this year, the Phil Oz team, which is our protocol R&D team, um, actually did a really interesting POC where they tested deploying a smart contract to Arbitrum that then allows any native dApps in the Arbitrum ecosystem to store data using that smart contract back to Filecoin. And it worked, which is awesome. Um, so that was a really raw POC. And so what Philby did, together with Project eStore, was to take that and productionize it a little bit further. So we did a whole project base, and if you're interested, come talk to me. We have a repo that is really easy to use. Um, we tried deploying it to a few other chains, including Optimism, as well as trying it out on Polygon. So there are a few, this enables a whole new space where different, uh, more dApps in other ecosystems and really popular app chains can then access uh, secure storage back to Filecoin natively from dApps sitting on those chains which is super exciting. So imagine the use cases here, right? You don't have to come to the Filecoin L1 using FVM. You can use the tools that you're familiar with. You don't even have to shift your dApp. You can just 
add in this capability there. So that's what we're super excited about, um, and we will be launching that at the ETH Global Hackathon this weekend. Now talking about the new, way of, new wave of Filecoin storage L2s. So now that we have crushing data bridges um, enabled, um, we also have teams that are building this out as a service, as a full product for making it super easy for users, either general data users that, users that want to store their data, like a Google Drive, or um, any other big enterprises that want to store their data as well. We have a new wave of L2s coming to Filecoin. These layer tools include Storacha, Akave, Lighthouse.storage, as well as Basin on Textile. And these teams will be launching things, have already launched in the past month, or are launching things really, really soon. Um, definitely look out for them. They provide easy to use SDKs, as well as APIs that you can use in your dApps. How is that different from what I just shared with you previously? Um, previously, if you're more of an advanced builder and you want to use cross-chain data bridges, which I shared just in the previous slide, um, you will have to build it up from scratch, so you will have to um, coordinate the storage flow with the storage provider, as well as to coordinate the flow with retrieval and build up your debt from scratch. That is really cool because it enables you to build any specific debt that you want. So on-chain data lakes, AIs, LLMs, you can build all of that. Now, if you want easy storage and retrieval, and you know, maybe storage and retrieval is not a huge part of your debt, but you want easy usage, you can use these SDKs and APIs that are taken care of. The whole storage and retrieval flow is taken care of by these L2s, and they make it super quick as well. So definitely look out for these. These make it really easy to build a Filecoin moving forward. I would also like to share some Filecoin virtual machine updates. So um, if you are a builder in the Filecoin space, you might be used to certain third-party integrations on other chains, um, such as you know, Block Scout, Gelato, uh, more Oracle services, and so on. Um, in the past few months, and there are more to come, we've been working on integrating more third-party partners. These are some that have come up in the past year, um, in 2024, so super exciting. This was built by the, supported by the Phil Ponto team. Um, together with all these partnerships with awesome third-party integrations. Um, so if you, you know, even for the Block Scout, if you want to check out the Explorer, you can actually head over to the FVM Block Scout page, and that is a super popular Explorer that you can now use. Um, they have an API as well. Uh, we have safe multi-state contracts enabled, so that's something new that you can build with. Um, we have eOracle added in as it's one of the top AVS layers on Eigenlayer. They have also added programmatic oracles to Filecoin. Um, we've also added in Gelato services, uh, Web3 functions, as well as the relayers. So those are available on FEM as well, which then unlocks things like gas search transactions and so, and so on. So we're really looking forward to some usage there. Um, and then adding some support for multi-call three, which was also a really popular ask from developers. So we've been listening to devs and we've been adding in all these new functionalities so it makes it even easier to build with FEM. Okay, so now if you are a dApp builder, um, and you are starting from scratch. You want to launch your first dApp on Filecoin using the FVM. Uh, we've heard you, we hear you. It, it sometimes is a little confusing on how you want to build on Filecoin. Now it's super easy. If you guys have used Scaffold E, for example, before, dApp starter kits are really where it's at for early builders. So we've built something really similar for Filecoin. Um, if you are looking to ship your first dApp, you want to get started, we have the new Fill Frame dApp starter kit. And so if you head over to this URL, you can check it out. It allows you to fork and ship your first storage dApp in five minutes, depending on the internet and how you, if you're at a hackathon event, you know the internet is tough. Um, but if you have high-speed internet, uh, five minutes should be really easy for you to ship your dApp. Um, you can choose your storage service. So all the L2s that I mentioned earlier on, um, we're adding functionality for those. So for example, in Filframe today, you can use Akave, you can use Storacha, you can choose these storage RAMs. So you don't have to think about you know, going to their page, figuring out their docs, and then adding it into your dApp. It's already ready for you to use. Um, we also are ready to use the party integrations, so things like Axela, we have added Lit for access control, we have added those into the dApp starter kit. So you can choose these additional features for your storage. And we have a ready-to-use front-end, so no more having to fix front-end. If you are not a front-end dev, it's not your thing, we have a template ready to go for you. Um, so we really look forward to seeing some unique storage-specific dApps being built with Filframe, or you know, simple dApps that use Filecoin um, for secure storage. So really exciting. If you're interested, the QR code is right here for an easy tutorial, or you can head, to, head over to filfra.me. So, 
Um, now that you've heard all these exciting new functionalities coming to Filecoin for builders, we also want to announce our Next Step Builder Grants. This is a new program, super fresh off the press. Um, you're the first people to hear it here. Between the Filecoin Foundation and Philby, we have launched the Next Steps Grant program. Um, it is actually launching this week. Um, 13 November. Uh, I'll share a little bit of how you can see that IRL and come meet the people behind it, talk to them, get a sense of what the program's about. Essentially, it, it is up to 100K in grants available. We want to be able to support builders who have built their first POC or first MVP and want to take it further. So if you apply for the grant, you can get a 5, 7, or 10K grant amount. Um, we're looking for mostly project scopes within three months, one to three months, depending on what you're planning to ship. And we're looking for builders with a great, great proof of concept and or a strong relevant background in what they're trying to build here. And so we would love to give some grants to encourage more builders in Filecoin. So in terms of cool things to build, so what we're looking for, storage and retrieval depths are definitely something we're looking for. Something unique, special, super storage and retrieval focused, data focused, that would be awesome. We're also looking for developer and data tooling. So if you, look, if you have been in FEM for a while or you're using it and you think that there are some missing capabilities that you can add with additional tooling, we would love to have those being built as well. Um, if you're thinking about integrating Filecoin with any third-party tech or any third-party ecosystem, how we can bring Filecoin and export its storage and retrieval services to other ecosystems, we would love to see projects there too. So more of the multi-chain future that we're supporting. Um, and then we are also keen on technical content creation. So if you are great at building tutorials, docs, uh, blogs, videos, we would love to see you building as a developer and then creating some content for education and excitement. We would love to support that. Do apply for the grant too. And then lastly, we leave it open to super creative devs. Uh, we just want to see something cool on chain. So if you have a really cool idea, something fun, not a meme coin, but something fun, um, do apply for the grant, we'll love to see that coming in as well. And yeah, if you watch 22 Jump Street, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, so, how can you get to know more details about the program once it launches on 13 November? If, you're, if everything I've said so far has been super exciting and interesting to you, we would love to have you join the Phil Builder community. Um, it is a bunch of really awesome people that we have in, in there, people who are really deep into the data space, um, builders who have stuck around for a long time and are figuring out problems and solving them. Super exciting to see. Um, we're having our first Phil Builder meetup in Bangkok this time, so this will be happening on Wednesday. If you haven't registered, we might be closing it soon because it's filling up fast, um, but check out the QR code over here and do sign up to come by. We will be talking about Phil Frame, showing you a workshop on how to use it. We'll be having a builder panel to hear from some builders and their experiences. Um, we'll have key people in the Falcon ecosystem, mostly on the developer side there as well. So if you were looking for some mentorship, uh, technical or product or ecosystem wise, do come by and talk to us. Um, Juan will also be giving a keynote. And then lastly, we will be giving details on the program, the grant program that I just spoke about and launching it there. So um, you can also follow us on Twitter. We will be talking more about the grants program in case you cannot make it in person. Um, but we would love to have you there. Um, also just to show a little, i um, very excited about the recent events that we've had in Bangkok and Chiang Mai. Um, we've been having the Phil Dev Summit. If you guys have missed that, that was an awesome conference to always try to attend if you want to understand Filecoin better and build and discuss in a conference. It, trust me, it's not just talks. We actually sit down and workshop things together, so it's really exciting. We had a full crowd this time in Bangkok. We'd love to see more builders coming in. Um, and we had our first ever Filecoin Hacker House. Uh, we had you know, mature developers as well as newbies to the ecosystem, and we'd love to see more newbies coming come in. So if you're ever interested, look out for the next one, probably next year, sometime in the first half. Um, and we have some social challenges coming up as well on Twitter, so you can participate in and get into the Filecoin ecosystem. And lastly, PL Dev Guild is a new program that has shipped its first cohort. Um, super exciting. We've had open source, amazing open source contributors come in, and we do compensate them for the contributions made. So if you're a developer and you're looking at how to join the Phil Builder ecosystem and community, these are some programs you can look forward to. Um, again, join us on Twitter. We will be sharing all these updates as we go along. So yes, thank you everyone for listening. This is awesome, awesome stuff from the Builder community and can't wait to get started. Thank you.